And welcome back to the Rejoin 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about the logical fallacy of denying the antecedent, uh, which is one of the more basic logical fallacies. So this is hopefully going to be one of the easier ones to wrap your mind around. And as previous videos, this is a, a, an actual formal logical fallacy, and the form of the argument is If P, then Q, so just the basic conditional, not P, therefore, not Q. This is actually not valid anywhere, pretty much anywhere where, where you'll see it. Uh, so. Uh, and it's a pretty basic one, too, because it's really just someone saying if, you know, something is true, then something else is true, and then saying, well, that that thing that I said is true would be the, the first part is not true, therefore the second part is not true. And if you look at it, it's kind of hard uh, to kind of see just by looking at it that it's never going to be true. Uh, but if you start putting examples into P and Q, uh, it becomes apparent really quickly. Like, for example, uh, if Barrett Brown is free, then he will be doing book reviews. Q. So in this case, the antecedent, I, I, the P in this case, uh, is Barrett Brown, a journalist, being free, and then the Q, or the consequent, uh, is the uh, he will be doing book reviews. Barrett Brown is not free, he's actually in jail right now, therefore, he will not be doing book reviews. Of course, that's not true. I have one in my other screen kind of loaded up right in front of me called Santa Muerte, full of greats. He's clearly doing book reviews. Something went wrong in this argument here. And it was not all that big to, for anything to go wrong. So the, the form of the argument itself is what's broken here. It's just uh, the formal construct of, of trying to conclude not Q, you know, trying to conclude that he will not be doing book reviews by this logic is broken. So anytime you see a, an argument of this form, if you can if you can tear apart anytime someone says if something happens, then something else will happen, and then makes a conclusion based on that, if you can make this uh, or make it into this argument, you can know that that at least is not a valid way to conclude things from it. Now, as in previous videos, there are going to be ways that you can kind of correct this argument. So if you're making the argument, you can kind of correct it into making a valid argument from this. And there's going to be two or three ways to do this. The first is, uh, and you may remember this from a affirming the consequent uh, video, uh, but it's going to be, the first is, using only, or more specifically, if and only if, P then Q, uh, not P then Q. This would actually be valid. Uh, I, I actually haven't really thought about the only if case, but in general, if you put enough onlys in here, uh, the, the, the truth will balance out. Uh, you just have to be careful when doing so that you don't end up with uh, kind of double negatives or something like that. But that's the first way. So if, if, if the, the argument contains only, it's constraining the, this relationship between P and Q such that P is only achievable, uh, or Q is only achievable from P, and you don't have P. Therefore, in that case, you don't have Q. But again, that this is outside of just this part of the argument. If it was just this part of the argument, it would not be valid. Now, the second way is to kind of change this argument so that there's no not in it at all. You know, if P then Q, so if uh, if Barrett Brown is free, then he will be doing book reviews. P, so in this case, Barrett Brown will be free, therefore Q, he will be doing book reviews. This is true. This is actually what if P then Q means. It is that if you have P, you can conclude Q from it. That is a valid thing to do. It's called mod or mod modus ponens, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's just how conditional statements work. So 
that's the first way that you can correct the first invalid way or invalid form to a correct form of this kind. The second way is to flip these two around and make this one and this one both negative. So you're basically denying the consequent, which is fine. Denying the consequent, again, is a valid way of making a conclusion. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. This is something that you can conclude. So if Barrett Brown is free, then he will be doing book reviews. Barrett Brown is not doing book reviews, therefore Barrett Brown is not free. That is a totally valid argument that you could make. It doesn't actually happen to have true uh, uh, premises in this case, but it, at least it's a valid thing that you could say. So let's go back to the uh, original uh, fallacy. What are some examples from around the web that people have used to kind of clear this one out? And again, this is from seekfind.net, uh, a, I guess, Christian perspective of logical fallacies. Uh, so that even, you know, in this case, if you disagree strongly with someone, make sure that they actually understand that this is actually not a valid way of arguing, regardless of what they believe. Uh, in this case, the seekfind.net crowd certainly believes that. So, if we have found dinosaurs and human fossils living next to each other, then we would know that they lived together at the same time. We have not found human and dinosaur fossils to next to each other. Therefore, we know that they didn't live together. This is their kind of caricature of scientific reasoning. Now, in this case, uh, again, notice what they did here. They, they made an argument that people probably have made against them. Uh, in this form, and, you're and they are absolutely correct that it is not valid to conclude that there is no, uh, you know, state where humans and dinosaurs are living together uh, based only on this argument. There is going to be other reasons uh, than the pure kind of absence of evidence here uh, to believe that dinosaurs and humans never lived together. For example, uh, you could see the, the changes in our DNA. Uh, and how certain changes have only occurred at certain periods of time in the past. And you can see you know, where, where the DNA of the, the reptiles and chickens and all sorts of things kind of converged in the past. And you can actually just look at when dinosaurs existed and when you know, Homo habilis and other uh, human-like species existed and then kind of compare the two and see if they in fact did live together. That's one way you could do it. This is not one way you could do it. There's, there's Again, going to be other ways of, of, of showing things that are true, and this is just not one of them. So, uh, what are some other examples? You know, if I am watching this, you know, this is another one from uh, Khan Academy. If I'm watching this video, then I'm on the internet. I am not watching this video, therefore I am not on the internet. Well, of course, you can do a lot of things on the internet that do not involve watching this particular video. Um, and so it, it is just not sensible at all to conclude that if you're not doing one specific thing that you're not on the internet at all. Unless, of course, there's some kind of connection between the thing that you're doing and being on the internet. So, for example, if it was, you know, only if I am communicating with, you know, packets of data, then I'm on the internet. You know, you, 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 could, you could make a similar argument uh, that would be valid starting from that point. But of course we did. So, in general, uh, again, this is a, a simple case. Uh, we, we can go through more examples. So if you're interested in more examples of these silly if P then Q situations going wrong, you know, feel free to ask for them. They're, they're a dime a dozen. Um, and uh, so hopefully this, this will be uh, something that you can avoid doing in the future. Do we have any questions from the audience today? No questions from the audience. Okay. So, uh, as usual, there will probably be some kind of a, a donation form at the bottom of, or a donation address at the bottom of this video in case you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, feel free to leave a comment, and we will see you next video.